this is an interesting move to me, a surprising move to me, I think. Actually, I'm very surprised by this. Jacoby Myers, who I had as my uh, top wide receiver free agent, I think most people had uh, him as the top wide receiver free agent on the market, and admittedly a, uh, a lower wide receiver free agent market class, uh, he ends up signing with the Raiders, who I think a lot of people felt like didn't necessarily need a Jacoby Myers, because you have Hunter Renfro, who can do a lot of the same stuff, but to me, I think this is clearly Josh McDaniels making his offense be as close to the offense he wants to run. This is him kind of basically saying, listen, last year they had talent, but they didn't have the right pieces necessarily, and he's now trying to kind of make the pieces more fit his scheme. Uh, that's what's, you know, there's always the question, right? Do you fit the scheme around the players? Do you fit the you know, players around the scheme? What do you do here? McDaniels clearly likes his scheme. He trusts his scheme. He's won Super Bowls with his scheme, in middle, you know, with Tom Brady, but still, uh, he trusts that scheme, and he wants to get the players who can kind of work in that way, and I think a lot of people are wondering, why not get like a deep threat, right? You have Hunter Renfro, you have Devontae Adams, maybe just get someone who can take the top off the defense. What the Patriots have always liked to do under Josh McDaniels is have several different receivers who can be just good route runners. That's what they value, and they want as many good route runners as possible. Jacoby Myers, not a fast guy. That's not his thing. Uh, in fact, they, this is a team that doesn't have a really a, a deep threat right now, uh, at least not a great one. But what they do have now is three incredible route runners. Renfro, Adams, and Myers, that's the best one, two, three route running punch you will get. That's one of the best route running uh, punches, one, two, three punches you've ever seen in the NFL. And I'm going to get into the, uh, the film in just a second and talk about why I like Myers so much, but I think this is just a good fit. I actually really like this fit, and I think that the Raiders might be sneaky good next year. I know that might uh, maybe be a hot take, and we'll have to see what they do, but with Jimmy Garoppolo, he should run the offense well. I think they will be able to scheme up guys open or just guys will be able to get open just inherently with Adams, Myers, and Renfro. And not to mention, oh yeah, you got that Darren Waller guy to worry about. Talk about a great fourth option being I, who's the fourth option here is it Renfro is it Waller is it Myers I don't know all those guys can legitimately be number one options on specific plays and can also be number four options on specific plays you're going to take some of these there's gonna be plays where you're like okay let's take out Hunter Renfro uh, on this one you know because you, you don't need that many receivers out there that's how loaded this receiving core is now so I don't know only three years 33 million, that's a steal of a contract. He could easily be worth 18 plus million a year. He's that good, I think. So, you know, let's just, instead of talking about why I, that I, instead of talking about that, I think he's good. Let's now just get into the film, talk about uh, why I think he's so good. So you see here, Pro Football Focus, if you look at the top left-hand corner, had Jacoby Myers ranked as the seventh best free agent available on the market. He was their highest ranked wide receiver available on the market, and you can see why. Look over at the right side of the screen at some of his PFF grades and PFF war, very good numbers. Uh, he was consistently a top 30 uh, wide receiver in football, although rarely a top uh, 20 wide receiver in football, but still, getting over a quarter of a win in terms of PFF war every year is certainly good. PFF's projected contract for him was four years with a $16 million a year average. And, you know, again, a very talented player who has done a lot for New England. Like, let's start off with this play. This is a good example of kind of the things that he can do where it's a simple play, right? He's just running out to the flat on the top of the screen. What what are you really supposed to do here? What's the big deal? Well, first, watch how he runs. It's he's just running towards the middle of the field. I mean, that's just what you think is happening if you're trying to cover him, which is exactly what makes Jacoby Myers so good is his route running. He's a smart player and really good route runner, and that's what allows him to get open consistently. Watch how when he cuts back to the outside, he does get wide open there in that man coverage situation and is able to pick up a nice little uh, chunk right there of yards just simply from his route running and doing the little things, understanding, hey, Yes, I could just run out to the flat. It doesn't seem like it's that difficult of a play, but if I just do this little extra thing, 
the fake to the inside before moving in and really selling it hard and taking the extra time to sell it, that's what allowed him to get completely wide open. But also going over to uh, this play, I think it's important to talk about both sides of the coin there. It's sometimes you want to use the extra time to make a move, right? But sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's better to, like in a situation like this, for example, you see the corner who's covering him, Jeff Okuda, is playing very far off right here. There's no one over the middle of the field who's going to be in coverage. So you don't have to take too much time to try and uh, get Okuda out of position. He's already kind of out of position just before the play even started, given the route that you're running. Watch how one uh, you're going to see at this point, Bailey Zappi took the snap and really Akuda sees what's going on immediately. Akuda read to play quickly because it's an easy play to read, but what are you supposed to do in this spot? Watch as Zappi is going to hit uh, Myers there, who's able to do a good job after the catch as well, picking up as many yards as possible. But this is just what I mean when I say he's a smart player. You see him get up to the line and he knows when he has to make the extra moves to get himself open and he's capable of doing that, but he doesn't just do it to do it. Sometimes you do the opposite. Sometimes you just run your route and that's what he did there. Going over here, this is another good play of, you know, one of things that was kind of a knock on him coming out, you know, part of why he didn't get drafted was because, well, not the fastest. I think he ran like a, I believe it even said on the chart I showed you earlier, he ran a, a 4 6 3 40 yard dash, which is not ideal. But wide receivers can get away with not necessarily being the fastest if they have other tools such as route running, which Myers clearly does. And this is an example where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Watch what happens. So right off the bat, Myers gets the inside leverage, but then kind of runs straight forward. So the corner who's covering him is giving up absolutely no separation whatsoever. But as we know, Myers is about to cut over the middle. And what's really going to be impressive about this is how well he cuts. Watch him like seemingly on a dime be able to move towards the middle of the field. That allows him to get open and that allows him to pick up a good chunk play right there. So again, he's someone who, when New England needed uh, a catch, seemed like he was the guy they would go to. He is their, uh, you know, their guy. And that's kind of what, uh, you know, th that's what allows him to be so effective is because he is someone who, in man coverage, when, you know, that's a lot of times when these situations happen, right? A lot of third downs, it's man coverage. He is a man coverage killer, and that's what makes him so valuable. Like, this plays another example where, I mean, it's once again going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup in man coverage. It's cover two man, so there's, uh, you know, uh, further deep, it's not going to get too open, uh, but just because there's two safeties there. But anything kind of within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. If you can win anywhere there, you probably have a completion. But you might notice I didn't tell you what route Myers is running on this one. All I've done is circled him and the corner who's covering him just because I want you to just watch what he does here. Watch him and watch how he goes to the inside and look at him just completely dominate that one-on-one -on -one matchup. The fact that he had to cut towards the inside almost hurt him, uh, but he was able to get past his assigned man and pick up a completion there with really good route running. His footwork is incredible and he's a smart player. So while he doesn't necessarily, you know, sometimes you look at a receiver like Calvin Johnson and say, okay, that guy was built in a lab to play wide receiver. Jacoby Myers, maybe not so much, but he's such a good route runner. He's so shifty. He moves so well uh, and, you know, he's still pretty athletic so uh definitely someone who has uh, just adds a ton of value and at the end of the day how are you adding value uh it really doesn't matter how it really are you adding value should actually be the question are you adding value if you are then that's the end of the situ end of the, the conversation at least that's how i view it but what do you guys think let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching